All right, guys, welcome to part two of your MySQL database integration. Um, for this lesson, what I will be doing is I will be showing you how you're going to take the database that you created as web student. Of course, this will be your last name, um, and these are your, your data columns or your data fields, and how to actually integrate that into a PHP file, or should I say, use your PHP file to send data from the web to your database, okay? So just want to recap a little bit to part one. Part one, you built this table uh, that's entitled uh, by your last name under the database web tech. Um, I instructed you to build a record field and then label the rest of your fields one through nine for a total of 10 fields. All right, now from here, we're going to look at the uh, PHP file it is actually going to send data over to the WebTech database and update your particular table, okay? So I have something sketched up here in Notepad++ uh, just to cover the basics and actually uh, give you the code that you would need to write data over to the database. But what this video is primarily going to involve is a very detailed breakdown of this PHP code, which I'll go ahead and copy to the comment sections in the YouTube video. That way you have this all in one place. All right, so <clears throat> this is a PHP file that will copy uh, data from itself over to the MySQL database. So let's talk about it. All right, we're going to walk through this line by line. Okay, first thing we have here, and I've got it commented as well to help out. Uh, this is the database information, the login, server name, location, everything that you need to know to actually start the connection. So for the server name, you're going to use localhost because the place where this PHP file is stored on the server is on the same server in which the MySQL database operates. So anytime you have a scenario like that where the SQL database operates on the same <coughs> uh, computer as the PHP file, you can use localhost and uh, the file will know what you're talking about. Uh, the username I built for you guys to log in is webstudent. And uh, for security's sake, I omitted the password, but you guys know it's the standard password that we use with WebStudent. The database name, you'll call WebTech. Because if you look here, the database is called WebTech. Okay? So I put all this information in variables so that our connection command can be a little bit more uniform, and you'll see what I mean in a second. All right, now. <clears throat> The project that we're going to connect it to obviously is going to manage data like uh, first name, last name, date of birth, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but for this lesson's sake, I've just used simple numbers uh, for our data to move over to the database. So um, I've made some variables. These are the variables. This is the data that I want to move to the database. So if you guys would just make uh, value 1 through value 9 uh, containing the numbers 1 through 9. Okay. All this is is a variable and setting it equal to 1, another variable setting it equal to 2, so on and so forth. <clears throat> All right, now here's something that's new. This is a PHP function, uh, MySQLi um, object. What this does is this sets a command to connect to MySQL using a uh, process called MySQLi and puts it in a variable. <clears throat> so we're going to take a variable called CONN, short for connection, and in that we're going to put a function and call it new MySQLi, which is new connection, uh, and then here are the parameters for the new connection, server name, username, password, and DB name. Well, where are these variables coming from? <clears throat> They're coming from up here. So everything that you put in here gets passed to here, packaged in a MySQLi command, and packaged into the variable called CONN. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to establish the connection. But we're not just going to go out and establish it or throw the command to connect and not check and make sure it connected. So what we're going to use is we're going to use an if then statement to not only start the connection but also tell us if it's good or bad. So if variable CONN and we're going to put an action to that <coughs> connect error, if it can uh, if it fails to connect, if it errors out, we want it to tell us that it did, and echo connection failed. 
However, if it doesn't fail to connect, we're going to have it echo connected successfully. Okay, so with this, we're going to establish the connection to the database and have it tell us if it failed um, when we made our attempt or if it succeeded. So if it fails, it'll echo connection failed, and then it will also add to that uh, what the error was. Like if it was bad login information, it'll actually come back and tell you that. Otherwise, it'll say connected successfully. Once the connection is completed, after we see the connected successfully, the script will then continue on because we want to take action. We've connected to the database for a purpose. We want to put data in it. So the next thing I have here, and it doesn't have to be done in this particular order, but at this point is when I set up a new variable called SQL, and what I put into that is an actual SQL command. All right, insert into my table here. The reason this is called my table here is because you will have to correct this to your table name. So insert into my table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What that says is insert into my table these columns, and I want you to notice that these columns equal this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> That's why they're labeled like that. The values of value one, value two, value three, four, etc., all the way to nine. So you may ask where these values come from, value 1, value 2, value 3, still on the screen, value 1, value 2, value 3, value 4, etc., all the way to 9. So again, I set up the values here, and they're being placed here. So what these really are are these numbers, or these are numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Uh, and they have apostrophes and commas because this is the syntax for my SQL. Now, another thing you have to note is that these do have to match. So insert into my table, into these columns, these eight columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or sorry, my apologies, these nine columns, um, these nine values. So again, to say it more clearly, insert into my table, into these nine columns, these nine values. If you had nine columns here and six values here, you're going to get an error that it didn't know what to do with the other three. Okay, so again, so if you're placing into nine columns, you're going to need to have nine values. So insert into my tables, uh, in, sorry, insert into my table, these columns, these values. <clears throat> All right, once this SQL command is packaged into a variable, I execute it on a query. And again, I don't just run the con query SQL. I want to check and see if it is successful. So I use a if then statement. Now, again, with PHP, you have the if, but we don't type out the then. Uh, then is just kind of inherent as, as it is what is between these two curly brackets. So if CONN, which is my connection, to query SQL. So what this does is this actuates or puts in action, if you will, this SQL query that I wrote right here. <clears throat> if it's true, if it's good, it'll come back and say that the record updated success successfully. If it's bad, for whatever reason, it'll tell you error updating record, and then it will give you the reason to error it out. So uh, initially we had a uh, connection issue, uh, or sorry, connection issue. Uh, we established the connection here, and then we establish the query here. So again, if CONN query SQL, which is this command right here, is good, it will tell you the record updated successfully. Otherwise, it'll tell you that there was an error updating the record. All right. After that, the last thing we want to do is close the connection. And then let's test to see if this works. So I'm using Notepad++, but as you guys remember, uh, we cannot uh, run PHP scripts from here. So we are going to do a Control A and copy this, and then we're going to take this over to the server. So I want to keep this video at 10 minutes, so we're going to make a Part 3, and I will show you how to complete this there.